Australian heritage is the house in the woodhouse in the garage. There's no reason to get four grains of carbon that's built here. That back door would be the best. Start this down here just to get the contact information for everyone. Thanks. No two houses are a floor to the No two goals are in the street would pay the same for the supermarket. One, we're going to that. Supposedly, all the hammer and all the digging is what causes those ladders to work. Yeah. Nope. House and building spring every next to her. So I was in Glenn Stevens ago before we walked in. It was down over the line. Mm hmm. And the other one's on the road. On the right hand side of spring? Um, part of all the heritage. It's a stone house on the right. Will we be doing the spring off of Harrison? If you turn on the spring off of Harrison. Okay, yeah. So it's the it's the one across the street from right next door to Tommy Lopez, two up on the right. Yeah. No, I'm talking toward Harrison Street. Yes. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know where you mean. Okay, yeah, I'm wrong. To the other way. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I looked through this on the wall and he, there was an email, I think. Mm. So we have no no chairs. So we'll call me in order. Uh, roll call is being completed with the sign-in sheet. Okay. Uh, we do not have meeting minutes present for the January meeting. Uh, staff will work on getting those completed and We'll have some additional material for the April meeting. We're going to be scheduling these going forward for 4 p.m. second Monday of the month in this room. If, if that doesn't work, please let me know. We can make accommodations. Um, yes, yeah, so that could be public. <laughs> if there is any public comment. Anybody up for public comment? John, do you have anything you want to <laughs> Unfinished business. <clears throat> no unfinished business. Moving to new business. Item A, first energy project discussion. Uh, you want to talk about the Zoom? If you don't mind, I'll take that. Uh, I was in a conversation with Drew Wade from First Energy. Uh, Drew and his supervisor were going to try to be here today, but could not. So we would like to do, they do have a plan put together. They would like to uh, do a Zoom meeting with the members of the Beautification Committee so that uh, they can present what, they're, what they can do, their capabilities, and try to get some kind of a scope or a project uh, in the works to get started with. So with all your email addresses, what I'll do is reach out to him, provide him those email addresses, and if you can give me some kind of idea where their afternoons, uh, mornings, which works better for you guys. Um, that would be helpful. For a Zoom meeting, you're yeah. saying? For a Zoom presentation from First Energy. Afternoons are better for me. Okay. Yes. Same for me. Same. Okay. This time of day, yes. actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Probably. I'm, I'm not, it, his may be more uh, during the work day, uh, but uh, I'll try, to, I'll try to get it as late in the day as possible, any particular day of the week to avoid. Mm. Okay. All right. Well, I'll reach out to him and then I'll inform you guys all by email as, to, as it goes back and forth. And we'll try to find a date just as quickly as we can to get, get their presentation so that you got some ideas to what they can do for us. Okay. Right. Item B, the downtown streetscape design discussion and planning. Okay. In front of you today, you'll see the February 14th copies of the Preliminary West Main, actually pre-application West Main Street and West Pike Street Sidewalk Community Development Project Grant Project application document. Uh, this was formulated for the purposes of a CDBG grant for downtown, specifically West Main Street sidewalk improvements. We had an opportunity as a city to go for $500,000. This is the planning document that has come out of that process. There, that will be continually evolving until we a, get the money, and then B, actually get the formal engineering design completed for how that concrete would look. 
But with any streetscape project, there are other elements. Um, in particular, also a copy of this was sent out. Um, one of the things that we've discussed, uh, or that we've discussed in January, was the need for plantings in the downtown area. Staff has uh, made a recommendation to City Council in this budgeting process that would, so for the next fiscal year, we've requested uh, thirty thousand dollars of monies for the establishment of just these types of general planters. Uh, you'll notice that there's different designs and techniques we can utilize. The um, the ones uh, that have the appear to be terracotta pots on a street, th that was a project that was completed in Parkersburg. Uh, we actually used Corinthians. Oh, shoot, I forget the exact name of the tree now. Um, created a column, column effect with the tree. Um, you're we were able to do two inch plantings on those into pots. They're also mobile. Alternatively, uh, the product to the right, that's a Granger supplied uh, cement uh, cylinder. Uh, it doesn't have as much character, say, as the general plot, but you can have it has a wider diameter, so you can actually get a, a substantial shrub in there. And then alternatively, the picture on the bottom is a project that occurred on High Street in Morgantown. Uh, they utilize box planters. Uh, you can't get trees in those, but you do end up with a much longer area of visual impact with the plantings. Uh, something to consider. They utilize that for a buffer space on the actual street surface, taking away um, parking spaces to create outdoor dining. Um, actually, next, wait a minute, afraid that they created that to create a travel way to allow for their outdoor dining, which took up the entire sidewalk for, um, oh, I forget, the, one of the restaurants in downtown, Morgantown. Anyway, this is just to give you an idea of themes. If there are any, I guess, plantings that you would like to see in the downtown. This is something we can discuss now. With what was requested, the general idea would be we would be able to have every intersection have at least um, four of these types of features. Uh, and when I say every intersection, I'm talking from 2nd Street, South 2nd Street to South Chestnut Street. Um, that was the, the focus of the plan. Looking at the diameters of, not the diameters, but the widths of our right of way, and in particular the widths, widths of our sidewalks, the only place we can really put planters on the, the walking surface of the sidewalk is on Main Street and Pike Street. Uh, becomes more challenging, especially on the side streets. Uh, the widths cut down in some cases to below four feet of practical walking space, so we wouldn't be able to meet ADA clearance guidelines. Um, but this is something um, where we can plan on. And additionally, with that, we had a discussion last month or in January regarding specific planter types, or not planter types, but planting types. Um, we do have, through WVU they've, and um, Morgantown, they created a listing of general plants in our market to avoid. Um, I don't have the copy, I have copies of that ordinance, but. Basically, there are listings that we can make available for approved shrubs and tree types to be able to give John guidance when purchasing for this project. Um, if it's amenable, I can send that out to everyone via email. And then if with this, I can also show the locations on the, on the general mapping of what we're talking about. I'm talking about what I'm saying. There's going to be at least one of these at each point. But overall, I, I wanted to gather your all's thoughts on what do you want to see in terms of the downtown streetscape? Uh, additionally, there's more than just plantings. Um, we have unique uh, lighting system in downtown, multiple types of light fixtures. Those can be examined as well as um, integrating uh, festive lighting, festoon lighting across this, the actual roadway surface. This was something that the Uptown group was able to acquire funding for, we're able to plan for that now with these sidewalk projects, we'd be able to install the masts, then to be able to put the lighting on and keep it in the actual right of way as opposed to connecting them to buildings. Um, this alleviates one of the concerns regarding power for those lights as it would then become city. Um, so any, any thoughts? <laughs> I've thrown out a lot of information, I realize that, but. 
Yeah. Yeah. We, we, and that's something. The goal with this plan is there's been some, there was actually a recent change. Oh, shoot. I think I believe it was approved um, through the legislature, but it has been signed by the governor to allow for designated outdoor refreshment areas. Um, we're probably going to have to have discussions with District 4 just regarding how we can utilize the right of ways. Um, Morgantown, for instance, they do have an agreement of allowing for easier installation on High Street. That's something we should probably explore for our downtown. Um, as we have more service, more um, restaurant type of businesses come in, there might be some opportunities to take advantage of these new laws to allow for a, how do I put this, a pleasant dining experience, but also being able to walk around and enjoy the atmosphere of the outside. So, um, yeah. But, so getting get to um, Mr. Workman's point that we would ultimately have to work with DOH as this is their right of way. Um, all maintenance is through District 4, traffic engineering and whatnot. So we would have to get this approved by any, any changes would have to go through District 4 at a minimum. I personally would like to see a combination of, um, of a couple of these. Um, I personally would like to see trees uh, implemented somewhere within the downtown. So the large planter would probably have to be what you would go with with that. But I also like the idea of um, the elongated planters um, with stuff, you know, that maybe aligns the sidewalk or um, a mixture of, you know, the larger planter with something like this maybe um, encased, the larger planter encased in that. Uh, a city that I've visited that I think would be a good model for us is Berkeley Springs. And they recently did a new streetscape been within the last, at least within the last probably, I'd say, five years. Um, I know that they had significant amount of grant money, and they they had to stay within certain confines of whatever you know the grant obviously yeah. determined. But um, so maybe we could take a look at, at them or contact them and see what I thought that that was a. A good combination of, of things there that would work in downtown. Um, I like the overhead lighting idea. I think that's a great idea and would be very attractive in our downtown. Anyone else? I feel the same way. But I feel like we, we discussed, I mean, it seems like everybody was pretty on board for wanting some kind of tree. Mm -hmm. So I agree with probably, I'd like to see those worked in in some way. We know that Johnny has uh, has expressed that, you know, roots are an issue. So to keep those in some type of a container would probably be our best bet because we don't want to cause mm -hmm. a nightmare for you guys. And also, um, you know, you have foliage, you have birds and issues like that that, you, that are a concern. So, but I do think that we're not really reinventing the wheel here because many cities have these types of things. So if we can find a smaller, uh, a tree with a smaller root system that, you know, doesn't necessarily cause the the problems with, with um, you know, cars and issues with that type of thing. Exactly. Right. And that was something that actually came up in the, um, it's not in this document, it came up in the, the when was that, the 16th, we had a, a public input session. And specifically, we need to probably think about working with DOH on lining mm -hmm. the parking spaces somehow so that we, <coughs> we can establish if there are going to be impediments to those uh, passenger side doors. Mm -hmm. Well, I have a vision of a box with something like this inset in that so that when you open the door that there's nothing impeding that because it's back far enough. 
depending on how the tree would work with the <coughs> with the property that's They they are, it's just that operators aren't necessarily parking in places that make sense. So my, my question also, John, is does this encompass new sidewalks also? The, the, the planning document was created for sidewalks. So in particular, we, we utilize this to establish linear, the linear distance of our sidewalks, the, the, getting the widths, and so we were able to establish the general prices. Um, if you go to the beginning of the document, we get into a five, 10 year plan, potentially for affording these improvements. Um, that's something that at a minimum, a five-year plan makes a lot of sense, especially given the costs. I mean, it's the cost of concrete is only going up, mm -hmm. and even with these ten-year plans, I, I just don't. You're going to end up spending five, six years, and you'll have Main Street, which that's probably going to be an efficient use of time and resources, but not necessarily going to be what could happen. We could have. A larger impact quicker, but it's also, it's going to come down to money, dollars and cents. So we're our staff is looking for all funding opportunities related to sidewalks. Um, we have larger funding scopes associated with plantings and beautification elements of place making, if you will. We're going for those funds as well. It's just this takes takes time, but mm -hmm. we're we're hopeful. We we want to get the ball rolling on this, especially with the state getting ready to do some projects in downtown. So. Okay. You see the drainage system we're using now, the sidewalk that you can plant trees in. Uses, it's probably like soil, uses the soil water. Oh, a bioswale? Yeah. Okay. So, this is something um, Mr. Falk and I kind of agree on. The, 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 uh, the challenge with any planting is the maintenance. Mm -hmm. And yeah, especially when you start talking about integrated systems, there's a lot of opportunity for failure. Um, I mean, even with a tree box, you still have, you got to have issues. So I can, we can do some research on it. Um, and also, I mean, getting into MS4, there's possible funding sources associated with stormwater management. So we can, we can look into that. I wasn't sure though if... That's what we do on the well, and that's that. That was a question I had. I mean, how is the board's feeling about actually cutting sidewalk, putting trees into the ground? My, I mean, I think there's a little. From what I gathered, there was a little bit of hesitancy given past experience. But yeah, I I think that we should. I mean, whatever. The recommendation of someone that knows more about that than I do, but the, Johnny, from conversations with you um, in the past, that that really wasn't the most conducive way well, to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I'm even thinking, you know, like a smaller. Not any large tree that's going to be grow, growing significantly. Well, yeah, once you go above two inch caliper, the root ball is going to become too big anyway. Mm -hmm. Which one? Mobility. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yes. I'm a little bit confused. Is this. What we're talking about just for the planting and sidewalks or so the, is it the entire street well this would be the sidewalks looking at so i just to go to page give an example going to page eight like right out front here we have the imaging of the general right-of-way 
everything that where the cars are parked, we really do not have any control over that, with the exception of I think we can get some paint put down. But uh, looking at meter design, um, pole de pole masts, uh, lighting design, these are all elements that we we're taking into account. Um, but you can't redesign the street per se. Like, is that in the works at all? Like, uh, we, we did receive grant funding to do a project in investigating the potential for bi direct two way traffic on in downtown. Um, we haven't executed anything with that to see if it would be functional. In terms of the act, at the end of the day, that all the intersections are going to be in the same places. All the lights are going to be in, all the traffic lights are going to be in the same places. Right. I mean, it's. I was just thinking, like you know, there's so much. There's parking on both sides mm -hmm. of Main Street, and I think that looks bad myself. Um, I know the way that I would see it is. Maybe some parking on Main Street, but not everywhere. You know, and if you have parking, maybe angled parking, even. I, yeah, I think we have three lanes. Yeah, it just. I don't think it's. I think the parking needs to. People need to walk a little bit more, um, and I think it could make the street look a lot better. I'm not saying. I think you need handicap parking in front of the courthouse and that, but I, I just think it's just, I don't know if you're going to be looking at that, but yeah. just the parking on both sides of the street, I think are just, it's dated looking. We, we are, look, we're looking at that through a separate parking study. Um, uh, it's challenging because of the, with the, vol the buildings we have here, the volume of people that can be physically present in the downtown, we have a parking mismatch that's occurring. A lot of everyone wants to park right next to the front door, which, as you know, it's a, this is a downtown environment. It's it was initially designed for pedestrian-based commerce, not cars and parking. So, it's challenging. Um, I can see a uh, scenario, especially when we're looking at additional bike lane routes and things like that, there could be um, the, if, if we have like get to a point where we have a set, a divided lane. So like having the box planters go down one side, kind of like this is a New York City design, having having that ability on one of our travel lanes, as opposed to one of the travel lanes, just to say, so you're taking away the parking. Now, I'm, I'm all for it, love the idea. The problem is, the second you start taking away parking, they're, they're going to come to this room on Thursdays and they won't stop coming <laughs> because it, it, like I said, everyone think that the mentality you have is that this is my spot, I'm parking in front where I need to do my business. It's like there's, there's a complete, it, it's a phenomenon that's not unique to Clarksburg. So I'm, that's why I'm expecting that there'd be, there'd be some pushback on removing the actual street parking. Now, getting to a point where we could have angled parking, that's something that the DOH has historically frowned upon. Uh, they don't like to have um, the interaction where a vehicle would be backing out to a travel way. Um, having said that, though, I'm, I am confident that we can find some kind of middle ground to have, uh, have a different type of either either looking at angled parking or at least getting to some area where we could establish a better down, a better, how do I put this? Either having angled parking or either have, yeah, either having angled parking or providing for more off street lots. So something has to give to increase the volume of cars that are gonna be able to park here. Um, staff has tried uh, multiple times to work with the state on this, uh, just in general, but they really want you to do the engineering study first and bring it to them to, so that they can then tell you if you're approved or not. So there's there's a huge upfront cost with any with asking for that, the um, alternative parking designs on the street surface. But uh, that's something, like, I'm gonna make a note of that because like I know we do have that other parking study funds available 
um, yeah, angle like parking. If, when you look at this picture that you showed us here, I mean, it, it looks like it would, if you put something like this, it would extend into where the car is parked now. So that's what that is, exactly. So that, that was on street park, parallel on street parking that they completely took away. Is there any possibility that another parking garage could be developed? Like where the Oak Hall cafeteria used to be that lot? The problem is the parking garage we have now is not utilized. Yeah, it's I mean. Two blocks away is probably why. But, but walking is something that we're, you know, we, we would like to see more of with downtown, but it's just people are not really interested. If you force them to, they will. <laughs> well, we have to be cognizant that we we have a lot of people coming into the city to do business that aren't acquainted with paying for parking. Um, the challenge of driving in an urban environment, even if Clarksburg isn't the, the booming metropolis it once was, mm -hmm. it's still kind of threatening to some people to have to come in here and navigate the streets. So I can, I can definitely see some benefits. Um, I guess it, hmm. I just see if we could have a parking building like on Main Street somewhere, free parking, yeah. where everyone could park, and then you just walk one block to where your business is. Well, so then, then the, the real problem is that we go back to cost. When we're yeah. anything elevated and anything below ground, the, the costs have become ridiculous. We do have what would be beneficial. We do have quite a number of gray fields, especially to the rear of the structures um, on the other side of Main Street. There's possibly opportunity there to go at least one story up. That way you're still using concrete rebar as opposed to doing full steel construction and the costs will be cheaper. But we we just, as the, let's see, the, we have quite a few downtown parking providers, but as the, the parking authority, as the city's provider, really, we're not, the money is coming from Jackson Square from a surface lot. So that's, yeah, I mean, we've also, we're also investigating opportunity with that parking study for decreasing some of the number of meters, especially going further towards McDonald's. Um, so allowing that for that, that free parking, if, if you want to call it free, you still have to you know, take a hike, but you're not paying for it per se, at least in the same sense. No easy answer on that one. Let me, I'll have to get back to you. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the only way I can put it. Cause I, I really don't, I don't think we have the capacity now to, to begin even investigating it as the parking building, it needs a lot of work as it is. And I, Professional, I see that as being the, the a major focus for at least economic development going forward is making just that one structure viable. Then we can begin discussing additional facilities, at least from parking authority side. Who's doing this study? No. Like, I mean, is it who put this together? Me. You did? Yeah. Anybody remember? About the time the veterans' wall was going in, and Clarksburg tried to take out this left hand lane parking and turn that into a kind of strip mall style, I believe. So, remember that happened? I don't. Because about the time the veterans' wall came in, everyone tried to do that to offset the loss of businesses in the mall. Something came up with the DOA, and so I was going to tell my answer. I was going to prove that, okay, so we were, we were going to prove all the information. You just need to remember to rip all that out and put it all back. But he took out that whole left hand lane, he's going to the inside of the He's going to turn that lane back out for dining. We were trying to get the strip mall out so we were trying to come back the loss of business in the mall. Hmm. It should be like that. It happened in the 80s. That's that it should exist somewhere. We have so yeah we do have the, we have the downtown the study from 1976 I believe but one of the 
one of the big things that came out of COVID was outdoor eating and dining. So that DOH has become much more favorable to utilizing the right of way for pedestrian purposes than they were in the past. That's that's one thing we do have to be cognizant of. Main Street's a highway, Pike Street's a highway. Um, kind of ties us, ties our hands a lot. Yeah, we, we are, we're not allowed to regulate it. We're not, a, and the state's emphasis is equal between, between pedestrian needs and freight traffic. So freight traffic is not <laughs> it, it's, it's a challenging predicament, but like I said quite a few times tonight, this is not, we're not unique in this. This is pretty much everywhere. West Virginia has the same challenges. So we will look to Berkeley Springs and some other um, regional partners to see how they, or regional states to see how they've been able to utilize best practices for their planters. And we can come back to you in April. Okay. And in the meantime, if there are any specific plantings you would like to see, any types, by all means, send me, send me less, send me anything. If even color schemes would be greatly appreciated. Now, John, John likes it. He wants, to, he wants to know all the planters like, Four months ago, because he was order it now. So, <laughs> but we'll we'll be I'll be in contact, and um, it'll be later this week. We can just proceed with general conversation on um, downtown design once. So, I'm just a little bit confused. Are we looking at the planters in terms of like? what you guys are planning to do with this in the next, as a part of this project in the next five or 10 years, or are the planters separate, something we're looking at now, but just trying to. We've, we've made a request. It, it, the, the planters are one piece of the overall plan. Mm -hmm. So we, we've made the request in this budget cycle for the act for what $30,000 worth of planters, which we've estimated to be roughly 30 planters. Mm -hmm. Um, the other improvements, so uh, street lighting, signage, and masting, we're still investigating that, but mm. we we want to have, we I'd say we, economic development wants this to be something that's on a five-year plan. So we have a general idea of at least needs. If it doesn't happen immediately, we still have the planning available, but preferably on a five-year schedule. So basically, as of right now, as it stands right now, we would be staying within the layout of what we have yes. currently. Um, no changes to any of the parking styles or anything like that. Staff will, staff will I'll be reaching out to DOH to see about the feasibility of angled parking. So from what we have now, you want to see kind of ideas from us along with what you've presented um, for what we we would envision the street, the sidewalks to look like with planters involved in that. Yes. Okay. And any other design elements that are beneficial to the community. Okay. Do the sidewalks have to stay the same width? We, yeah, so we, we're looking at keeping the same width, widths of the actual concrete um, with and curbing. We would, um, as it's currently planned, just not utilizing ornamental concrete though it would be just standard standard tan <laughs> um, the issue being the aggregate load of the current ones have presented a problem when it comes to winter maintenance so do the sidewalks get redone as well well no that's why we're what that what uh, doh is is going to be doing they're going and uh, they've they have to put in uh, what are called hemispherical bumps or ADA um, intersections, oh, yeah. so, so you, can, you, you can sense them, tactile sensing. Mm -hmm. So um, there's the, that that improvement is going to be completed by the state. The rest of the sidewalk, though, is going to be this either it's it's someone else's responsibility. What what staff is saying, it should be the city's responsibility because we need it to be done. Um, they're going to also be coming in, and as it is right now, we just have to know that it's going to be a resurfacing project. That's also a little, I guess, challenging because that, that's pretty open-ended. Without more information, we're, we're not really sure what quality of uh, 
work we said or what quality and what type of work is going to be done because if it's just them coming in fixing potholes and that's what they're calling resurfacing it may change the whole dynamic of the project but we're hopeful that we're going to have new well i'm i'm hopeful that we'll be able to work out a situation where we have them doing full millings and building up we'll we will have to see what we can get So within the next five years, the sidewalks will be redone, correct? Based on the plan provided, right. yes, Okay. If, if it's funded. Okay. And this would be, this is something that we're, we're encouraging through the comp plan process to go into capital improvement planning across the board for more of our escrow needs. We, as a city, we have quite a, quite a bit of infrastructure that needs to be put on a time schedule so that we're making adequate investment well so the the pike street was included in these this planning project um the in looking at the, the current conditions it, it appeared that the most of the folk most all the focus is going to be on main street uh like south chestnut and a few of the other side streets but not much on pike and you're you're saying that right now the plan is calling for just plain yeah. concrete. That's because of I know you said durability. what yeah. is it? Durability. Way more durable. Mm -hmm. Stamping or anything like that could be done possibly. Yeah, that could be done. You could do MLL. Intenting. Yeah, mm -hmm. but when we did this part of the thing, you get brick in like the drill. Yeah, no. Yeah. Um, as they moved on, Pike Streets and the side streets became stamped. Because mm -hmm. they didn't like the mm -hmm. side was actually just stamped. It was just you know, not good concrete. Mm -hmm. But that's a possibility. Yeah. Okay. They have other so when so when you're looking for design ideas, Al? <laughs> well, and something else I think it's probably early to it's worth considering though, I guess to get thinking about it is like having the planters, as much of those as possible is great, but you might have opportunities to put design planning spaces within the actual concrete sidewalk mm -hmm. and do smaller plants. Maybe you obviously wouldn't want to avoid doing trees or anything with a large root system that's gonna possibly damage that. Yeah. And like places where you're talking about parking um, and accessibility maybe being a problem, you could have plantings that are in the concrete that are much lower that don't that way you're still having green space but you're not um, affecting anybody's accessibility so i get so my, my fear was that you all didn't want any cuts into the, the pavement but it sounds like the, the bigger concern is just having trees in the ground right okay okay yeah. i can work with this yeah i mean a, a tree itself i could see in an individual planter and then flowers and other okay. other things may be within the sidewalk area. Yeah. Because okay. a root system would probably not be something that you'd have to worry about with that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like Joel was saying, we could design the concrete to fit the planters. And maybe we have more spaces than there are planters. And as we get the funding, you add planters. Mm -hmm. Could just plant stuff in the space in the meantime yeah i'll put that in <laughs> okay i think we just need to start researching and looking to see what mm -hmm. we think we would like i mean if you see if there's an image or, or anywhere just you think of just send me the general idea we can we'll, we'll incorporate it okay I, and I give you the grain of salt though. This is only a plan. It doesn't mean it's not a done. So right. we, need to, we need to make sure that 
we're cognizant of the fact that we have we have to go through a budgeting process, so tweaks may be necessary or projects may change. When you talk about the light, the lighting above and the lighting that we have would not be affected or changed. Well, yeah. So the lighting above, this is. Let's see this. So it's from yes, yeah, from three hundred. This side has different type of street lights than that side. Mm -hmm. Um, that, that, though that side where all the businesses are, the street lights aren't necessarily conducive to having the overhead lighting. We'd have to put in, that's where the mast putting in additional support so we can get it up high enough. Um, I haven't looked at new, the actual new lighting. Um, we can on that, but is there, I guess, are, is the style that's currently throughout the downtown one that, that there's a problem with it? Or? I don't think so, but you know. I think it'd be nice if they're all the same. The same. Yeah. It would depend on <laughs> what was out there. Like I would have to look and see what, and if you have anything like that, could you send that to us? Tom? Yeah, it, like so, like just, just by like going from memory, the further uh, to the west, that's more ornamental looking than this, mm -hmm. this is more traditional, this is yeah, unique. Why is that? Because the streetscape, when they did the streetscape, they got my lowest bidders. So that walk of main was done first by a contractor who came in the lowest bidder, and that's what he bid. And then the next block that got done was done by lowest bidder, and that's what they bid. Mm -hmm. The lighting was different. Um, the issue we had up here, the lighting of the main from that first block, the spacing of the lighting was too far apart as well. So you didn't really have added the light on that block. That's why you see the flying saucer looking LEDs mm -hmm. on top of those. We came back and added those layers to increase the light on that block. There's mm -hmm. a lot of complaints about a dark Too block. dark. First block. Mm -hmm. Those are the light in the second, not even forward. Third, you can just go out down here and the light is a lot closer to God. We get that back now. About all of that's been converted to LED. We can convert about all of that. Don't forget in the sidewalks, on the main side of the pipe, you have infrastructure built in the sidewalk yeah. festivals. Mm -hmm. You have water lines, you have very electric, you have uh, sewer systems from the street going down. That's all in your sidewalks now, or below the sidewalk. And in addition to unknown vaults and other portions of private property that extend into the right of way. So, that's why that's not quite you know, I yeah. love that same infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Between at least third and fourth that block, that Square, Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have quite a bit of notes from tonight. I think I have pretty solid marching orders to get more material to you in the coming weeks electronically. We can have additional discussions on this going forward though, and we'll plan to meet in April. Okay. Any announcements? Hearing none, we're adjourned.